Chin Kanzaki, once a childhood friend turned superhuman Zet, embarks on a journey of power and destiny to battle a monstrous players and uncover the secrets hidden within the Imagi Corporation. The story kicks off deep underground, hidden from fancy people's watchful eyes. There's this secret place where rich folks gather, all crazy about violent games. In there, weird creatures called players are like puppets in a brutal game of life and death. But one night, these creatures, who usually act brainless, surprise everyone by going against their captors. It turns into total chaos and every human there ends up dead, except for two people. In the middle of all this craziness, there's Dr. Goru Kanzaki, who's got a tiny baby in his arms. He's running for his life. Now in today's world, we're following two couples as they walk through town, talking quietly about a scary serial killer causing trouble. Out of nowhere, a mysterious person slips by them, ending a life so secretly that nobody sees it happen. Meanwhile, far from all the town's commotion, an old man stops his excited grandson and gives him a special toy. The boy's name is Jin Kanzaki. He's not sure about taking the toy, but his grandpa insists that he carries it with him on their patrols like a symbol of justice. As Jin goes on his way, his grandpa tells him a big lesson, only use force for the sake of justice. Down a dark alley, a bunch of troublemakers cornered a helpless woman. Jin, wanting to help, suggested she pay him a thousand yen. She agreed and Jin jumped into action. He moved quickly along the alley's walls, making the thugs confused and weak. He took them down fast, ending the fight. But when Jin's fellow patrollers, Kuba Amaji and Kamoa Amaji, showed up, the battle was over. Kuba scolded Jin for what he did and wouldn't let him take the reward the grateful woman wanted to give him. Later on, fate brought the lady back into Jin's life. She kept her promise and gave him the 1,000 yen reward and her contact info. She even invited him to visit her. Jin was super excited and rushed home, but he found something really sad, dead bodies all around. His grandfather was badly hurt, and Jin tried to help by using a simple remedy he'd been told about, saliva, but it didn't work like magic. In a tough spot and not knowing what else to do, Jin hurriedly took his sick grandpa to the town's doctors. Sadly, they turned him away because he didn't have money. So Jin called Kuba for help, but Kuba's dad found out he was helping a homeless kid and scolded him really bad. When the phone rang, Kuba's dad answered and smashed it when he saw who was calling. Jin asked the lady he helped before for help this time, and they went to a hospital together. Later that night, she kindly offered Jin a place to stay because she knew he had no one else to go to. While they were in the bath, Jin started thinking about all the sad things that happened and he couldn't hold back the tears, knowing he'd never see his dear grandpa again. While they were out shopping, they got ambushed. The lady, Akimi Kawakami, got hurt when she tried to protect Jin. That's when the serial killer, the one who killed Jin's grandpa, showed himself. They had a really brutal fight. Jin got hurt real bad, and when Akimi tried to help, the killer pushed her away with this weird thing he had. Then the bad guy turned into a scary monster, ready to finish them off. But just as he was about to attack, Jin somehow stopped him and knocked him down. Jin started giving off this really strong energy that caused a lot of chaos around him. He went to fight back and he transformed into something the serial killer called Charisma. With a powerful hit, he ended the fight quickly. But then he turned back into a regular person and fell down super tired. A guy named Seiji Haitani, wearing a suit, showed up at the scene. He took care of the defeated monster, not paying much attention to Jin and Akimi, thinking they were just regular folks. Kanoha, who had grown up and was used to helping people, saw two guys having a fight and tried to stop them. But they were too strong and they pushed her away. The guys wanted to keep fighting even with her there, but Jin came and calmed things down. Kamnoa saw the ring on Jin's hand and called out to him, but their reunion got interrupted when the man who hired Jin as a bodyguard arrived. Later in town, Jin met up with Akimi, who was still trying to get better from the injuries she got in the tough battle. Later that evening, Kamnoa went to an event hosted by Kuba, and to her surprise, she bumped into her grandpa there, which left her really confused. After the event, Kuba talked about wanting to do street patrols again, like they used to. His buddies arrived in a truck, and they all went out to patrol the streets. Meanwhile, Jin got caught by the Amaji family, and he had to watch Akime get killed by a really scary creature. This made him turn into a creature called Zed. People watched as this monster attacked Jin, but he took the hits without fighting back. When he decided to get serious, he took out the monster with just one hit, and everyone was amazed. Then he broke the glass they were watching from, but Akemi's voice made him change back. The guys explained that Jin could only turn human again by defeating creatures called players. Jin found out that Akimi had turned into one of those players, but all he wanted was to have a normal life with her again. Sadly, a worker suddenly shot Akimi, and Jin had to watch her die a second time. This made him really angry, and he went after the guy. When he did that, he turned back into a human because there were no more players left. 
At home, Kuga got lost in an anime that made him feel all about justice. When Kanova came in, he talked about how frustrated he was with their dad's actions. But Kanova gently reminded him that real life doesn't always go as perfectly as the stories in cartoons. Meanwhile, Grandpa Mitsu introduced himself to the sleeping Jin and told him about their mission to get rid of the dangerous players in the city. He went to a damaged underground place and Mitsu explained the importance of the ring on Jin's hand and the one above called the Rings of Exposure. They used to use these rings to make players turn into monsters when they found in the facility. While they were talking, Jin suddenly collapsed and his painful screams matched with the bigger ring sound. Later, Mitsu said that he and Goro had made Jin as a way to fight the monsters they used to battle. Then he took Jin to the town and said that Akimi was still alive and the scary things he saw in the lab were made up. When Jin wanted to go outside, Mitsu warned him to cut ties with regular people to keep them safe. Jin agreed to help Mitsu as Zet as long as Akimi's messed up face got fixed and a doll made to look like her child who passed away. In a dark alley, a poor guy had a terrible fate. He turned into sand because of some players. A young girl accidentally saw this scary thing happen, and they wanted to catch her. She ran away, but one of the players chased her. Back with Jin, he was still working with Mitsugai, trying to figure out his Zet powers. When Jin got home, he found the girl who was being chased hiding in his closet. At first, he wanted to send her away, but she didn't want to go. She told him about the awful thing she saw, a man turning into sand. Eventually, Jin was nice to her and made her some food, which she was really thankful for. Jin felt like there was a player nearby, so he told the girl to stay in the closet while he went outside. But she came out and saw her bag on the floor, and before long, the players from before caught her. Jin hurried to help her and said he'd do it for 10,000 yen. She said yes, and Jin quickly took down one of the bad guys. While they were fighting the other players, they used some stuff that could dissolve anything it touched. Meanwhile, the people watching Jin knock out the girl who was their hostage. Out of the blue, one of the players turned into a monster, and his two pals left him because he broke their rules. Jin started fighting the player in his human form, but the big monster had him cornered. The monster grabbed Jin and started turning him into sand. But Jin found some inner strength and pushed the monster away. He changed into Zet and beat the monster, tearing it apart. Mitsuve got worried because Jin didn't change back to his human self, and the player was still alive in a tiny form. Then a person in white clothes called a sweeper found the hidden player and killed it, like they do with all players who turn back. The sweeper wanted to get rid of Jin too, but stopped because he couldn't tell if Jin was human or a player. That's when Seiji showed up and said he was an evil, a member of the special kind. Jin asked Seiji who he was, and that's when things got confusing. The next day at Jin's place, the girl told her name was Hanako Tanaka. Jin said she should leave the next day, and they argued about it. Somewhere else, Kuga was in a secret place where his dad's helpers made a special suit to make him super strong. Kuga didn't like it and complained about the color and not having a symbol on the headpiece. On his way home, he met a mysterious person who wouldn't say who he was. This person liked Kuga and had a strange offer. He showed a video where Hanako was thrown into a pool and left to almost drown. Kuga had a tough choice to make, save his sister or save three other people who were also in danger. Kuga rushed to the school and found his sister safe, but because of his choice, three school girls didn't make it. While Jun was walking with Hanako, they bumped into Konoha and her friend. Hanako noticed there was something between Jin and Konoha and got all clingy with Jin. Jin wanted Konoha to leave quickly and went away himself. But he sensed a player nearby and left Hanako behind. He hurried to find Konoha who got kidnapped by a player who wanted to fight him. Konoha and her friend were tied up and washed over by a big monster. Meanwhile, Kuga met the new Alphys, and Konoha managed to make a desperate call for help before they broke her phone. Kuga put on his superhero suit and went to help Konoha without any doubt. In another part of the city, Jin was getting beaten up real bad, and he couldn't turn into Zet. The player who took Konoha changed into a scary monster in front of her, and she was really scared and shaking. But Jin's Zet powers were getting stronger, and he found the strength to hit back hard and turn the situation around. Jin started looking for Konoha and finally found her. While trying to rescue the girls, he got attacked from behind by Shu and his copies. They had a big fight, but Jin was losing again. Just when things looked bad, Kuba came down from above and shot a powerful laser that defeated the monster. Kuba quickly got Konoha and her friend into his helicopter. But there was a problem. The helicopter couldn't fit everyone. Kuga, who was from the Amaji family, thought about staying behind, but the others said no way. Hayami tested Kuga's decision-making by asking him a tricky question. If he could save one person but three were drowning, what would he do? Trying to save all three might put their lives at risk. The question made Kuga think, but Jin encouraged him to stay strong. He let Tomomi take his place on the chopper. Meanwhile, Jin, who was hurt, found the people from the slums he used to protect. 
They were ready to help him, but Jin told them to run because their enemies weren't regular people. They were monsters. They didn't listen and faced the monsters bravely. Right when they were in big trouble, Ku came and shielded them, giving them a chance to escape while he faced the little monsters with determination. Seiji got disappointed with Jin because he thought Jin wasn't doing well, so he decided to become Jin's mentor. He wanted to teach Jin how to turn into Zet without getting hurt. He did something daring by putting a special ring into Jin's body, and it merged with him. In a short time, Jin started to turn into Zet. But it wasn't the usual white Zet. He changed even more and became a strong red Zet. Jin was amazed by this new form and felt like the body he had wasn't really his anymore. At the same time, Kuda killed the main player by shooting him in the air. The player got mad and turned into a monster with more power. He thought he was really tough now and faced Kuga, who switched to using a blade. Shu tried to run, but Jin caught up with him. Something strange happened. Shu started to change back because of Jin's ring. Jin and Shu fought really hard, and Jin was winning with every hit. But before finishing Shu off, Sigi came and said he used Shu to make Jin turn into the Red Zet. Even though Shu was really angry, Jin ended him and got rid of all his children. So there was no more trace of him. Then Jin went up to Seiji and asked him why he did what he did. Seiji said the ring wouldn't make him go backward because he was a high-level evil. Jin tried to attack him, but Seiji avoided all his moves and left. Meanwhile, in Kuba's tough battle, the player was winning. But when Kuba heard that Konoha was safe, he got his determination back. The player's attack suddenly stopped because Jin came and hit him from behind. The two friends teamed up against the player who had called a bunch of little ones to help him. They fought against these little ones and pushed the player into a two versus one fight. But then something weird happened. Jin's body froze and the little ones got back into the fight. The thing that Seiji put on Jin's chest broke, and he turned back to normal from being red. Jin told the player that he was just being used by Seiji, who didn't care as long as he could keep killing. Right then, Kuga grabbed the player from behind and Jin got his sword back. Together, it fought off the little ones and defeated the player without any more problems. Afterward, Seiji met with the evil leader. They talked about how Seiji got involved with the players and then turned the conversation to Zet. In the hospital, Kuga met Jin and learned everything about the players and Jin's transformations. Kuga found Zet really interesting and gave Jin a superhero name, Zet Man. In the lab, Jin got surprising news that his grandpa, Goru, was still alive. They went to find him, hoping to figure out how to become the Red Zet. But what Jin really wanted was to be with his grandpa again. When they reached Goro, Jin saw a really sad thing. Goro's brain had been brought back to get information from it, and he was in pain and awake. Jin felt really bad for him. So he decided to turn off the machines and let his grandpa find peace. Seiji had a bold plan to get a pendant with a red stone from the Amaji mansion. He sent a spy who looked like Jin to Konova's room to take it by force. But right when she was about to give it up, a helicopter outside the mansion disrupted their plan. Jin and his friends stormed into the house and found not one but two clones of Jin. Kuga rushed to check on Konoha but got attacked. He managed to dodge their hits and Jin helped him. The other clone went after Mitsugai who was a scientist. But Mitsugai's assistant protected him and got hurt instead. The fight got intense with both sides battling. But then one of the clones started to break down and Jin defeated him easily. Outside, the enemy got the pendant and made a big explosion that destroyed the mansion. Later, Jin met the boss in town and found out that the boss was the first player who turned against humanity. Jin got angry, but a sweeper stopped them from fighting more. The boss said that Seiji was a danger to both humans and the evil. Most evil wanted to live together with humans, but Seiji had a grudge against humans and he wanted Jin's help to deal with this big problem. When Jin got back home, Hanako was waiting for him. She asked if she could stay and said she felt safe with him. Jin promised to protect her, no matter what happened. Meanwhile, Kuga looked for Juru after hearing that his sister was kidnapped. But when he asked where Kanoha was, something happened to him. He woke up in a strange place and heard Juru's voice from an earpiece in his ear. Juru had a plan to test Kuga and made fun of him for getting tricked and kidnapped, even though he was a hero. Kuga was careful and looked around until he found a room full of his schoolmates who were big fans of his hero stuff. Juru gave him a tough choice, save his sister or make sure the other students were safe. It was really hard for Kuga to decide and he felt awful. Then a girl asked for his autograph and Kuga asked for a bathroom break. When he came back, he met another girl who thought something was wrong with the building. She offered to escape with him and showed a hidden door in the wall that led to where the other girls were kept. Kuga went on alone, leaving the girl behind and joined the others in the hall. But one of the students jumped on a bed, and it fell on the girl and killed her. Everyone was shocked and blamed Kuga, even though he said it wasn't his fault. The students ran into a passageway, not realizing they were making a bad choice that would seal their fate. 
Jiru sent out Hammer Man and showed Kuba an elevator that would take him to him. But there was a catch. Kuba had to leave the girls behind. Kuka said no way and decided to face the big robot and keep going with everyone. Meanwhile, Kanao went to Akimi's house, but she had doubts. She couldn't believe Jin's story about finding his parents, which he wrote in a letter. Suddenly, the peaceful town got interrupted when Sigi took control of the broadcast system. He talked about the evil and where they came from. Then something scary happened. All the evil in the town started changing into monsters and started hurting people. While all of this was happening, Kuba was in a tough fight with Hammerhead, who was a really strong opponent pushing him to his limits. In the town, Jin joined the battle as White Zet Man, even though he was hurt. Kuba was excited about the fight, but he realized that Hammerhead was not an ordinary enemy. He was a player with strong powers. But Kuba didn't give up and attacked again. When he lost his sword, he turned it into a gun and shot Hammerhead up close. After the battle, the girls blamed Kuba for killing and ran toward an elevator. But it was a trap with hidden lasers that killed them. Only one girl was left and she had been tricked into leading Kuba to Jiru. Kuba faced Jiru and his son, Ichiru. Ichiru had talked about justice, but Jiru revealed that Kuba had hidden reasons for doing what he did, using justice as an excuse to be violent. As things got more intense, Jiru transformed into his true monster self and so did Ichiru. They said they were once humans but gave themselves player powers after the underground arena incident. While this was happening, Kuba's friend Hayami revealed himself as a player and shocked everyone during a live press conference. Juru wanted Kuba dead, but Hayami had a different plan. He wanted to make Kuba a hero and make him kill his own father. Kuba got really angry, took back his weapon, and killed Hayami and Juru before they could trick him. Later, Seiji and his fellow evil interrupted the press conference, and President Amagi couldn't stop them because they were too strong. Jin came to fight Seiji but got beaten up really bad. Seiji even stabbed Jin's heart and made him turn back to normal. He showed a stake made from the red stone and wanted Jin to become a true player. When things looked really bad, Kuba showed up in his alpha suit, ready to fight Seiji. He quickly defeated the second player. President Amage told Kuba to kill Jin. But Kuga didn't listen and shot his own father instead. But the shot meant for President Amage hit Kuba's mother because she protected him. Then Seiji brought in a bunch of players, and it became a big fight with lots of people getting hurt. Kuba tried to protect the scared civilians, and just when things seemed really bleak, Konomo showed up. Seiji did something really sad. He showed Jin that he had Hanako as his prisoner. Even though Kuba didn't want him to, Jin had to do something terrible to himself. He transformed into the powerful Red Zet Man. This transformation gave him a special power. His ring could make all the players, even Seiji and Hanako, show their true, scary forms and not pretend to be human anymore. In a surprising turn of events, Hanako transformed into a gigantic, four-legged creature. This shocking reveal confirmed that Hanako was the player responsible for turning everything she touched into lifeless sand. While Seiji was explaining his evil plan, Jin bravely attacked him with determination. But Seiji's strong powers pushed Jin back. Meanwhile, Hanako's transformation continued uncontrollably, turning innocent people into lifeless sand. In a clever move, Jin managed to surprise Seiji and land a powerful blow on him. But just as he did that, Kuga stepped in quickly to deal with the chaotic and dangerous Hanako. He struck Hanako with his weapon, cutting her in half, which was a shocking sight that left Jin feeling extremely sad. While Koopa struggled in a tiring battle against Seiji, Konoha and the detective watched as Seiji's attacks took a toll on Koopa's protective suit. Koopa was exhausted but determined, refusing to give up even as Seiji pinned him down. Seiji offered Jin the chance to finish Koopa off, but Jin surprised everyone by turning his attack on Seiji instead. The situation took a chilling turn as Koopa aimed his weapon at Jin arguing that Jin needed to die to stop the players from regressing further. With the sun setting, a crucial decision had to be made. Kuba hesitated, but ultimately, he pulled the trigger. Jin's transformation wasn't over yet. He evolved into a controlled form called Charisma, overcoming his deadly instincts. He left the scene and embarked on a path hidden from the public eye. Many years went by, and the two friends chose different journeys. Kuba kept protecting innocent people from the dangerous regressed players and Jin, quietly and without public attention, continued his heroic mission as the Red Zet. The end. So the moral of the story is sometimes, even when you think you have to fight your friend, it's just to protect what's left of the world from turning into sand.